lives in the sunlit world of what he believes to be reality. But there is, unseen by most, an underworld, a place that is just as real, but not as brightly lit. A dark side. Welcome to the first episode of, I guess I'm going to call it Dark Side Citizens, because Tales from the D is frankly not good. Um, but anyway, uh, Tiffany Morris is with me. How you doing? Hey, I'm good. How are you? Not bad. Uh, so I asked you if you wanted to cover, I don't, I doubt we'll get through every single episode of Tales from the Dark Side, dude. Like, I'll probably, I don't know, be dead by then. Like, <laughs> like, I How don't many seasons I, is it? I don't think, it's like four seasons, but each one's like 24 episodes. Oh shit, that's a lot. Yeah. So like, this could feasibly be the next decade. Oh, cool. Can't no, wait but to I do mean, like, I don't think I have it in me to do <laughs> the next decade. <laughs> We might die from climate change before that anyway. <laughs> yeah, it's fine. It's This is all fine. Um, but so, yeah, Tales from the Dark Side. It's an 80s show created by George Romero. Um, I did a tiny bit of research. Apparently, it was originally he wanted to do a creep show like series. Uh, but Warner Brothers or someone still had the rights to uh, to the creep show name. And, uh Yeah. Hmm, they're like, no dice. Make your own thing? Yeah, basically. Like, so he ended up doing uh, Tales from the Dark Side. Um, I've been trying not to read Orrin Gray's retrospective to not temper my own feelings, at least about the episodes, but I did skim his first one he did. And what he brings up, which I think is interesting, is that Tales from the Dark Side is sort of like in between the Twilight Zone and Tales from the Crypt in terms of like the the time period and sort of stylistically. Yeah, I definitely get that vibe just from the first two episodes we've watched. I have no familiarity with it beyond what we're delving into here. So, um, right, but like, yeah. so it's you can see the Twilight Zone in that sometimes it's not. I mean, when we get to New Man, we'll talk about it. But I was like, <laughs> "Is this horror?" Like, yeah, it was. It's it's more just like weird. Um, obviously, the pilot Trick or Treat is very horror. Uh, very like that seemed very creep show. Mm-hmm. And so it's surprising yeah. that when they went on to the what became the real first episode, uh, it it had taken such a drastic tonal shift. Um, but yeah, I guess let's just like go into it. Uh, I wanted to lump both these episodes together because frankly, the new man for like a episode one is sort of crap. Yeah. I mean, I guess the twilight zone did have a lot of kind of like domestic drama episodes where the viewer was invited to interrogate like, you know, the family going through something weird, but yeah, it, it didn't have the same resonance as a twilight zone episode. Yeah. No, I mean, it was bad. Yeah. <laughs> I was being polite. <laughs> yeah, no, it. I'd be polite about it. I mean, <laughs> George Romero's gone now, so he's not going to care. Um, I met him a few times. He was nice, by the way. Oh, my God. I forgot he died. Oh, man, that's a drag. Shit. Five or more years ago? Something like oh, that. Good. So, let's fucking start this shit. Uh, so, the <laughs> pilot was in 1983. It's called Trick or Treat. It aired on October 29th of 1983. And it's basically about an old man named Gideon Hackles, who is a douchebag that owns a store and is very rich and has people on IOUs. And every, like, Halloween night, he lets the kids come into his spooky house and, like, tries to scare them. And if they can find the IOU, then he gets rid of their uh, parents' debt. Gideon Hackles is an amazing name. I'm just, like, thinking about him, like, that's so Dickensian. (laughs) <laughs> that's a straight up Charles it's very Dickens on the character. nose yeah yeah I yeah. mean it's you know it's supposed to like this one feels much more like a creep show like I said uh, like a horror comic you know like it's not trying to be sophisticated it's just like 
I'm evil and old and rich. And <laughs> if children yeah, definitely- come, and then I will. I mean, obviously, with in retrospect, it seems terrible to be like, why are you letting your young children into this weird old man's house? <laughs> But what I didn't get about it was, like, why does everybody owe him? Why do these people interact with him at all? Um, I, I don't, it's sort of, I assumed he owned, like, a general store, but yeah, it's sort of, that part's sort of confusing, because I'm like, I, I assume they're farmers. So, like, yeah, yeah, wouldn't they be doing, like, wholesale supply? Like, I don't think they'd be going to a mom and pop for, like, everything, but. Yeah, and the guy lived in, like, a mansion or something, right? Yeah. So, yeah, it was just, it was weird to me. I don't know. I'm like, yeah, he had uh, stakes in different people's farms, or at least that one family's farm. And Yeah, I don't, yeah. it was sort of, I mean, I think you're not supposed to think about it too much. No. <laughs> I mean, basically, yeah, he's rich, he's old, he's mean. Like, yeah, he, you're not supposed to really overanalyze why he's rich, because then it falls apart. Yeah, and he definitely is, like, kind of cartoony. And has almost like a leprechaun-y, goblin-y kind of vibe. Like, he's just, you know, oh, yeah, uh, yeah. He's, very he's, he's animated does a lot of cackling, thing. yeah. Yeah. Um, cackling he's, is cackling. He, uh, like, let's see. It starts with him with, like, some accountants, and he's, he makes them come out at, like, three in the morning, which, okay. <laughs> um, They're like, yeah, he's legit. <laughs> and the the whole thing is... It's just to establish how miserly he is. Someone asks, like, can I get another cup of coffee? And he's like, sure, that'll be four cents. And now, maybe I'm a dickhead, but I was sort of like, well, if I owned a store and I had people I had hired come down to, like, do my books, I would probably charge them for coffee. Really? I mean, I don't know. I'm just sort of like, y'all don't, y'all, y'all rich too. Like... (laughs) Yeah, but they're they're guests. I don't know. I I mean, I I guess of all of the things we're supposed to hate him for, that was the <laughs> one where I was like, I don't know. I sort of see it. <laughs> really? Yeah, no, that was the thing. I was like, oh yeah, really? Coffee? All right. But I mean, it's a good cartoonish example of the kind of person he is. Yeah, and yeah. I loved. I was really confused because he was like, oh, I love Halloween. It's my favorite holiday or whatever. And I was like, but Halloween is all about giving things away for free, giving candy for free. Well, no, I guess he likes the trick part. Yeah. There's the treat or the trick, and he's just into the trick part, I guess. Yeah. But it is sort of a weird flex to be like, Halloween's my favorite holiday, but I'm a total dick. Like, (laughs) I mean, I guess that's probably true for lots of people who are total dicks also love Halloween. I mean, probably, yeah. Like but, you know, it's not a greedy holiday. No, it is a holiday where you give out candy to small children, ostensibly, and sometimes fully yeah. grown people. Yeah, if you're not an apple. But, yeah, so he goes into, I mean, it, it's only like 20 minutes, but basically he he scares the uh, accountants at one point. It's, I can't believe they <laughs> fell for it, because he, he just does one of these, like, what? Oh, I heard something. Oh, what is that? Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> and then he just has like a thing fly out and, and he cackles like an idiot. I thought it was pretty good practical effect. Um, that's the show. Yeah. Yeah. That's the show. <laughs> but yeah. So basically, I mean, at some point he establishes like, I do this thing every Halloween night. I have IOUs on pieces of paper. I hide them throughout the house. It's like very sadistic. Mm-hmm. Cause like, you know, it's very like class warfare type shit. Yeah. And he's like, Oh, someone's like, Oh, I can't believe you do this to kids and he's like i never touched a hair on their heads and he's just like well you're terrorizing them through the concept of debt and like <laughs> being in debt for your whole life and your whole family is riding on this thing like i know it's really heartbreaking yeah. too because like the kids like come into the house and they're just their dads are usually outside like, come <laughs> yeah. on like we're really broke and daddy needs a new pair of shoes and then they get scared and inevitably leave. Yeah, God, that dad just being like, it's okay. And just like hugging his kid. It's I was okay, like, oh ma'am. my God, what the fuck? <laughs> it was pretty emotionally affecting. And he really does terrorize these children. Like, it's like little devils and like, you know, just like, you know, just like haunted house type stuff from a carnival, but like in his house. Yeah, I'm sure the kids weren't expecting it. Although you'd have to wonder if there's like, you know, any kind of local lore that's grown up around this. So it's just like, you know, how kids speculate and create their own mythologies. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. 
Uh, in typical kind of Tales from the Crypt, creep show fashion, uh, like basically a witch shows up and he's like, ha ha, it's Halloween, you're not real. And she laughs way too much. <laughs> like way, like all she does is laugh. Yeah. Which fine. She's a witch. You know, eat, drink, and be merry. <laughs> but yeah, so I mean, I love the like last part of this episode because it's just like pure cinematic kind of schlock. I loved the witch. He's just like, you know, the witch comes into his house and then it's like she's burning the IOUs and there's like a, I think it's an undead pirate maybe. <laughs> I don't know. He like keeps going into rooms and there's like one guy who's got like an eye patch or something and he, he looked like he was supposed to be yeah, a pirate. Yeah, various monsters. Yeah, and he literally, my favorite part is he goes into one room and it's just hell. <laughs> There's, like, the devil is there, and there's, like, two little demons, and the devil says something to the effect of, like, getting hot in here or something. <laughs> I loved the lighting of that, too. It's like, all of a sudden, he enters the room, and it's, like, red and blue. I was like, oh, we're having a Suspiria moment here. Like, awesome. <laughs> but if you've seen, like, the original Creep Show, like, they were all about mm-hmm. that. Like, the fucking crazy, like, intense pink gel or, like, blue or whatever. Yeah, and then he... Does he die? I mean... Oh, you know, I don't remember. Uh, I remember, like, there's all this money floating around. It's kind of like a rap video. It's, like, flying, making it rain. And then the witch flies off, and she's cackling. And does the guy die? I think the guy dies. I I mean, I think the implication is that he dies of, like, a heart attack or something. Yeah, well, a spooky witch just fucked him up, so... I know, <laughs> and... He lost everything. And, but it is cute. The end is like this one little kid being like, I'm not scared. There's no such thing as spirits. And he walks up and the witch just like hands him a bag yeah. of money. <laughs> and he's like, oh shit, fuck this. I'm out. <laughs> it's like I did it. I saw yeah. there. So like that as a pilot, I feel like it, they should have just re-aired it as like episode mm-hmm. one, but they didn't. Uh, the weirdest shit is, so yeah, this one came out October 29th, 1983. Right? Mm-hmm. Episode one doesn't come out until September 30th, 1984. Almost a whole year later. They waited a whole year, and then the episode they decided <laughs> on was The New Man. Uh, yeah. And this one, I mean, it's bad. Um, Alan Coombs, played by Vic Tabak, whoever that is, uh, he meets Jerry. Uh, the whole shtick is basically he's a uh, he's a sober uh, former alcoholic. He's working at this like kind of marketing type job, some kind of sales job. And this kid comes in named Jerry, and he's like, "I'm your son." And like that's the whole episode. He's like, "You're not my son." And he's like, "I am, Dad." Yeah, and his wife is like, "How could you not remember our son? I can't believe you're such a drunk." And he's like, "But I didn't drink." And they're like, "Yeah, right, drunky." And like. <laughs> Yeah, that's the whole fucking episode. I'm like, this is a this isn't really scary so much as like Yeah, tragic. they're just like who's gaslighting who, you know? Yeah, it's just it's just a weird, weird this feels like something you should have dumped in the middle of the season, I yeah, mean. Yeah, it's a filler episode for sure. I mean, it's it's got its entertaining parts, this one actor just like completely losing his <laughs> shit like so hard is pretty entertaining. Yeah, he he plays the character well. Like he's very kind of kind of mean, kind of schmucky, but like kind of nice too. Like he's nice to his own teenage kid. Yeah, that I mean, we discussed this earlier. The weirdest part is he already has a son. So you'd think if you're doing this type of a narrative, okay, he has no kids and that's why it's so weird he has a son. Mhm. But this is like he already has a son. So it's even weirder where it's like I don't know. Is it his child? Yeah, like I had a hard time locating the meaning of the episode because it's like you could make it a like, oh, yeah, right. Like it's a non-parenting episode. So it's like this guy doesn't want kids and suddenly he has a kid and that's horrifying. But he already has a teenage yeah, son, so we know he can parent. Yeah. I was like, it could have gone I, like a I, I mean, I legitimately think we're... I think we're trying to draw too much into it. I think it's literally just some dude fucking ripped lines of coke and was like, <laughs> what if there was a, chi- a kid that wasn't your kid, man? <laughs> that would suck. That's like my custody battle right now. <laughs> yeah. But, like, the wife um, wasn't even that shrewish or anything. It's so just like, I don't know. No, she's sort of like, I don't want you to be an alcoholic again. And he's <laughs> like, I'm not. I mean, that was frustrating because I'm like, just smell his breath. He's clearly not an alcoholic. 
Yeah, but the kid was like, oh, he smelled like booze. And he's like, I know, that kid was like, have you ever seen Wonder Shows? No. Okay, there's a character on that called Tyler. And it's just basically like, he's the perfect child. That's the whole, like, skit. So it's just like, Tyler. <laughs> and he's just like smiling at the camera. Right. <laughs> So, like, that's basically what little Jerry is. He's, like, the perfect little child, but he's just a bastard. Yeah, he has that... Like, the kid did a good job, too, acting. I, I found the character irritating, right? Like, I was siding he with was the main guy. He was a little guy. irritating. He's yeah. like, I, Daddy smelled funny, you know? And he's <laughs> like, you're not my son! <laughs> but the weird thing to me is, like... <clears throat> so, you're like, cool, we had Trick or Treat as a pilot. What are we going to do for our first episode? They had at least 20 episodes, I think, in this season. There had to have been a better starting point. Yeah, I would think. I mean, even just reading some of the episode synopsis, synopses of what's to come, I was like, wow, these sound like way better episodes <laughs> than The New Man. Yeah, I mean, like, fucking Mookie and Pookie, whatever episode five is. <laughs> That's a title. The spirit of her recently deceased twin brother lives on in his computer. I mean... <laughs> In the 80s, oh man, that's going to be an incredible episode. It really is. <laughs> Even the next one, it's just like, someone gets a million dollars for selling his soul. Like, that sounds like a good opener. Yeah. But no, no, we had to get the new man. Yeah, and like, it's based on a short story, and I thought about reading the short story, but ran out of time before we went to record this. So I don't know if it was like, I feel like it would work better as a story, because you can get more of the character's interiority that way. Right, yeah, I, yeah. I think... It's just sort of perplexing, yeah. Like, this was on, I think, fucking, what, CBS or something? Oh, okay. Let me, like, double check if it I says, but, like... I don't know how many channels existed in 1983. That's fair. This is fair. Were there a lot? Like, I don't... I genuinely don't know. It's before I was uh, born. I'm so young. I don't know, man. So, let's see. Does it fucking say? I don't know if it says... Uh, it says CBS distributed it, so I assume it was on some sort of CBS type mm. channel. Yeah, I'm just fucking reading the wiki right now. Sorry, <laughs> this is great podcasting. Um, let's internet together over the radio. The rights are currently held by CBS. I assume it was on some sort of CBS type. Thing. I'm just googling how many channels existed in the 80s. <laughs> oh, I don't know, like 15. Well, I think they had satellites. This is really tangential. I'm sorry. It's fine. I mean, we're basically like, <laughs> like we've covered the first two. Although that's the confusing thing. It's like, do you say it's the first two or you just say like the first one and the pilot? Like, do they count as separate? Yeah, because it's listed as episode zero zero, trick or treat is. And then the new man is zero one. And then it just well, goes from there. Well, the confusing thing is, which happens sometimes. It's like sometimes the pilot is literally just what they show to the network. Mm -hmm. So they get greenlit. And then other times it's like they show it, they get greenlit, and then they use the pilot. Yeah. But they usually use it as like a first episode. Mm -hmm. And then episode two is the second. You know what I yeah. mean? Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. So to go with a pilot and then have an episode one. Yeah, that is a little confusing. I thought maybe it was like the pilot was like an hour long and they decided to change it to a half hour format. But no. <laughs> no, it no, it's the same way. Like, so, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what went on there. It's confusing. I mean, I suspect Tales from the Dark Side, from what I've seen some of the episodes, from what I remember, it like takes a little bit to sort of like find its equilibrium. Mm. Um, I mean, it's got some interesting stuff. Like, I know King wrote a couple, or at least had a couple adaptations, like four episodes. Nice. Yeah. So, yeah, they do, like, Word Processor of the Gods. And then, who else do they cover? A Robert Block one, a Clive Barker one. Uh, so that'll be interesting eventually. Yeah. And they did have, in 1990, the movie, which, like, probably more people know the movie. I've never seen the movie either. This is also new to me. It's decent, but, like, you know, obviously mm -hmm. I'd like to, like, cap it off with that one. <laughs> assuming we're not dead from climate gotta change. Gotta add a Dune flavor to everything. It's fine. But, yeah, I mean, I, um, I guess, like, final thoughts. You know, 
one thing I didn't bring up was that the kid, the fake kid, Jerry or whatever, and the new man, he had really cool toys in his room. Did you notice that? They were pretty sick. Yeah, he had like a yeah, robot. Yeah, the robot was awesome. He had like this nightlight that was like spaceships fighting, I think, or something like that. Did you notice that? Yeah. I mean, that scene's pretty funny, too, because it's like he, the dad goes in, and I guess he assumes it's the teenage son's mm-hmm. room. That's a bit confusing, because I'm like, does this look like a teenager's yeah. room? But so he pulls back the blanket, and obviously it's Jerry, and he, like, flips out. But I'm like, dude, there's, like, toy robots. Like, that's not the teenager's room. That kid's in a leather jacket. Come on, look for, like, your Motley Crue posters He or was whatever. necessarily surly. I don't know. He, and then, I mean, I think the mere uh, – sorry, we never talked about this. The meanest part is, like, well, there is an aspect where he goes back to work, and the boss is like, it's been two days. Right. So there's, a, there's definitely an element of gaslighting, but, like, you never really find out – I assume the boss is gaslighting him, but I don't know if the the wife seems legitimate. I well, don't know. I guess know. we should discuss the ending, right? Cause- yeah, but so he, like, the wife leaves him. Um, he's, like, in Jerry's room. One of my favorite scenes in the entire episode, he's just being like, Jerry! <laughs> like, breaking the shelves yeah. and shit. And, like, the meanest shit is he, like, opens up the kids. Okay, first of all, this kid has fucking t-shirts that say Jerry on the t-shirt. <laughs> And they're, like, different colors, so I'm like, okay, (laughs) that kid is going to get so many swirlies. (laughs) My name is on my T-shirt. I forget. (laughs) Yeah, but so he opens up the drawer, and there's literally a bottle of booze in Jerry's drawer. So it makes you, like, is he, like, a chaotic kind of imp spirit of alcohol? I don't know. Yeah, and then, like, at the very end, the boss is, like... Jerry shows up at the door. There's a whole new guy working there. It's the same boss guy. And he's like, have a drink. And the kid's like, it's me, your son, Jerry. Right. So then it's like, I think the implication is the boss is in on it with mm-hmm. Jerry. And he's like intentionally hiring dry drunks. For my question is to what fucking <laughs> yeah. ends? Like, you're just like losing employees left and right. There's no retention. That doesn't make sense. Yeah. Like, he, what does he get out of it? I don't know. Like, what? Other than maybe he's just a sick fuck and likes to, like, watch people's lives get yeah, destroyed. Yeah, schadenfreude. Everyone's got to have a- I mean, it's really sad, dude. The fucking dad at the end is just like, he's a drunk yeah. again. And he's, like, just in the room and just, like, just all these empties and that's it. And it's like, ta-da. I was like, yeah, okay. Spooky. Maybe this is an extended metaphor about the difficulty of, like- sobriety or maintaining sobriety but then it just takes all these weird turns and i'm like what <laughs> yeah it was confusing so my own little headcanon to make it all make sense at the end was that they're both addiction demons or something and they just do that work with like gaslighting people who are recovering but nothing in the episode really indicates that that's just me yeah, I mean, there's a fun part where he's at the table and sort of like, I guess, imagining, extrapolating, and it's like Jerry's getting like, the mom is giving Jerry all this food, and she's like, you're such a good boy, Jerry. I'm so glad we're rid of my terrible husband. Oh, right, yeah. Yeah, I guess we're not supposed to know if that's just him imagining it or if he's having some sort of like prophetic vision. I don't know, but like, <laughs> they just hate this guy. Yeah. Like, this episode hates this man. All he's trying to do is stay clean and, like, provide for his family now and all this shit. And he's really struggled. They established that. Yeah. And it's just this one guy and fucking Jerry being like, <laughs> yeah, fuck you. We hate you, you fuck. Yeah, it's like, okay. <laughs> there's nothing, the thing is, there's nothing really, like, horror about it. No. Like, I guess you could see the Twilight Zone part where it's like, you know, like, what if there was a boy that was not your boy in the Twilight Zone? Yeah, kind of like the Black Eyed Kids urban legend thing, right? Yeah, but, like, in the Twilight Zone, they would have done something, you know, like, they have that famous one where it's, like, the kid, and he can, like, create things with his mind. So, like, that's supernatural. Mm-hmm. But this is just, I'm your son. Yeah. Hi. <laughs> like, it's- like, that's all he does. He doesn't do, I mean, ex Save maybe intentionally splitting up this guy's marriage, making him lose his job, and getting him back on the sauce. He's not, like, supernatural. Yeah. It's just, like, it becomes a story where everyone's an unreliable narrator. 
And it's just like, I, guess, I don't understand. I guess you could see it as maybe it's supernatural in that he can convince people. Like, he, the mother seem, and the wife seems to think for sure that's her son. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she's... But again, it's like, to what end? Yeah, it doesn't make any sense. Because, like, there's no indication the kid is now part of this family at the end, right? Because then he comes no, in and does it again. No, because he's, like, <laughs> saying there's a new guy who's his dad. So you assume he goes and does the whole thing over again yeah. with a new family. But why? <laughs> We'll never know. Yeah, right. That's that's the thing. So yeah, as a uh, you know pilot, I like the pilot well enough. Yep. It's pretty stupid, but it's sort of it's like fun. what you're expecting. Yeah. Uh, the first episode, I don't know. I hesitate to say it sucks. Like it's not. I mean, it's bad, but it's something you would watch if you were just already watching TV back in TV times. Right. I mean, like I feel like it would have been fine in the middle of the season. It would have been one of those like, huh, that was weird. Well, anyway, mm-hmm. but like as an opener, it's really stupid. Yeah, it's not a strong opener. It really is not. And I mean, I did research to the point of like, was this really what aired first? Like, or <laughs> was this just the it. first one on the DVDs or whatever? And no, it seems like this is the one that aired first. Yeah, I mean, it sucks for anyone who really waited that full year. I know, right? Imagine, like, wow, there was that cool one with, like, the witch and, like, the weird old man that was, like, sort of Tales from the Crypty or, like, Vault of Horror comic type stuff. Mm -hmm. And then you're like, oh, it's an alcoholic who has a son that's not his son. Cool. Yeah, and it's in that, like... Uh, early 80s vibe where it's like it still feels kind of 70s and everything just seems nicotine stained you know what I mean like I'm curious to see if that'll carry over yeah what's funny is when we get the revisionist shit about the 80s it's always like neon you know Mm -hmm. but like you know as an 80s child like the realness with the 80s was just like a lot of browns yeah very dingy like a lot yeah like nicotine stained yeah because you could smoke everywhere I remember that that's true you could I did as a small child. No, I didn't. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, so in general, uh, not the greatest start to a series. I mean, it's hard to, cause like you're obviously I'm comparing it to like Tales from the Crypt and like fucking Twilight Zone and like all of these other shows now. Um, like more recently, something like Black Mirror. Mm-hmm. Black Mirror and the Twilight and Zone are my kind of wheelhouses. But you know, like it's hard cause like Tales from the Crypt had like a really great, opener mm-hmm. and but that was also hbo so they could do more stuff you know it's like was that truly great or was it just that it had boobs and, <laughs> and like hurt. drugs and swears i mean yeah yeah i mean but i don't i will i'm gonna go out of limb and say if this if there were tits in this episode and he was like what the fuck it still would be a bad episode yeah yeah even boobs couldn't improve it <laughs> no they Sadly. couldn't um but yeah so so that's the show. I mean, we're going to try to cover at least season one of Tales from the Dark Side. I'll see how our spirits are after that. Mm. If we're just like totally broken down, I might switch to a different show. <laughs> Sounds good. Um, but yeah, so this is going to be sort of like a side mini show. It's under the Celluloid Citizens banner, hence the Dark Side Citizens. Uh, but it's like, I'm not planning on doing these. If we ever do an episode that's an hour long, that seems frankly odd like i don't i don't see any of these i mean maybe but three like, times as long as the show <laughs> three times as long as this one for one episode i don't see it happening mm-hmm. um i don't know maybe we could do two episodes per episode because they are quite short mm-hmm. but i'll see how i'm feeling but yeah we're hitting the 30 minute mark so we should probably end this fucking thing all right all right um but yeah until next time i'm sean m thompson and i'm tiffany morris and uh, go watch a better show. <laughs> no, I'm sure we'll get to some that are fun eventually.